He's got a black Welcome back to the coverage of YCS Prague, the first Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series of the year. We have 608 players that made the trip to the beautiful Czech capital. And uh, we've made it to round two. Yep. And it's the first time we're going to have Nick Cross in our feature match. You make it sound like we weren't going to make it to round two. As if some <laughs> terrible tragedy oh, was going no. to happen <laughs> to us in between rounds. I was, I was trying to <laughs> indicate that we only made it until round two until uh, we got Nick Cross in the feature yes. match. Yes, uh, Nick Cross is... Which uh, is not a bad thing, I guess. No. Uh, in, in fact, in between rounds, I just uh, spoke to more of the guys that have accomplished something before, made it to the top cut, for example. And... Um, Piran Aski from Berlin, for example, told me that he's really not happy with the Necros deck. Like he's playing really? it himself, and his team came up with a, with a very good build, apparently. And he says it's just so much going on. And if you ever waste that one MST on the wrong card, you, you got no chance to turn the game around. Well, yeah, you, as soon as the floodgate comes out, mm -hmm. Vanity's emptiness hits the field. Necros don't really do anything because yeah. all of the monsters are special summoned. So it is hard to play. And he also he followed it up and he said if more of the skilled players, the guys that really know how to play their decks, would play something different like Clifford, he would be, he's under the impression that these other decks could be up on par with Necross. It's very possible. Um, to be honest with you, we've seen a massive big lead for Cl Clifford mm -hmm. right in the first round as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, and having a look through, just a casual look through all of the deck lists that were over there, it looks like it's kind of Clifford, some Burning Abyss, a lot yeah. of Necros and some Elemental Hero as well. Just I, I would say that the picture that some people try to paint, which is that Necros trumps them all, is not quite correct, at least at this point in time. I cannot really confirm that. No, no it, it's, again, this is the first European YCS that we've had when Necros has been legal. So yes. we will see. Yeah. That is one story of the weekend, of course. Another big story is the first YCS that's been almost in Eastern Europe. We have been, we stand corrected, it is in fact Central, Central Europe. But um, since Prague is such an affordable city and good connections to places like Budapest, Bucharest, all those cities in the East, we have a, a number of players from Hungary, from Bulgaria, from Slovenia or from Slovakia, which we also have in our feature match in the second round. It's a Martin Sinchak from Slovakia. And uh, he is running the Necros deck. Yes, he is. And then we also have Sebastian Poisel. Poisel, yeah. Poisel. Uh, from Germany, who is running Satellanites. And Satellanite got a massive card in Secrets of Eternity, which was Constella, Satellanite Constella Diamond, which you can use in either Constella or Telenite deck. Yeah. Um, it's a huge attack, and it also, I believe, it banishes cards instead of sending them to the yes. graveyard as well, which is a huge thing when you're playing against Necros, when you're playing against anything that wants anything to go in the graveyard, basically. Interestingly enough, it, it hasn't really been the topic of conversation, the deck, has it? No, no, not, not Satellanite. Um, it's, it's always been there, mm -hmm. but everybody is always too, far too focused on playing Clifford or Shadow or Burning Abyss Burning to really Abyss. appreciate yep. what's going on. Because Satellanite actually came out in Duelist Alliance yeah. as well. It yeah. was considered to be the third deck before Clifford came in. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Jake Quincy who took Satellanites all the way to the top 64 in, I think, Milan. Maybe it was Madrid. I'm not sure if I'm mixing this uh, up. No, Jake Quincy bought um, Clifford uh, in Milan, so it must be Madrid. Okay, either that or, or it was his brother, Luke Quincy. Well, one of the two Quincy brothers who both are fantastic duelists. Uh, was undefeated in the Swiss rounds with that deck, if I'm not all too mistaken. So there is definitely some potential here. Yeah, definitely. So let's take you to the feature match table with our new layout, where you see more of the cars and um, less, f well, not in that <laughs> particular camera, but uh, w once we get the camera that's looking from the top with our lovely Yu-Gi-Oh carpet, um, there is the handshake. Those guys are ready. You see Sebastian Poisel on the left-hand side, Martin Sinchak on the right-hand side. So here is the opening hand for Sebastian Poisel, and you can tell all of those cards are ending up on the field. So he's got a Satellanite Vega set. It's also interesting. Normally you always have the Satellanites face up. Uh, well, Vega actually allows you to special summon a card from your hand and he doesn't have another monster to special summon. Now, the reason he's set everything, not only because he can, but because <laughs> he feels he's probably playing against Necros, and he really, well, Trishler wouldn't happen just yet, but if one card went in the graveyard, yes, Vega is likely to get destroyed. 
Right, speaking of Necros, we got the typical opening of discarding Necros of Bryanek. That allows you to search your deck for another Necros card. And he's gone for the Necros of the Decisive Armor, right. which you can discard from your hand to give a Necros monster plus 1,000 attack and defense. Yeah. It also lets you target a set card your opponent controls and, and banish it. So here comes Clausalos. There has been yeah. some discussion about when you actually want to shuffle your deck when you're playing Necros. <laughs> or especially yeah. give it to your opponent to cut it. And uh, the judges were about to announce something prior to the tournament. That is, if you're playing Necros, please have your opponent cut at the end of your turn. Because yeah. we all know you're going to search ten times. It was the same rule at uh, World Championships as well with um, Infernity mm, yeah. and with Mermail. Right, so there's the Necros Kaleidoscope. Which is a very, very good card. Is so it? Just uh, if anybody missed it, he discarded Clausolus to be able to go and get himself a Necros Kaleidoscope to be able to use Turret for all of the, all of the tribute, tribute for, for requirements. The yep. yep, to bring out Necros of the Indecisive Army. It looks like he's looking to get rid of some of the back row. Plus, he's got a 3,300 attack monster there as well. Now, sure, it when it goes to the graveyard, lets him get a warrior type monster. So he has just gone for Unicorn by the look of it. Now, the so level 4 monster. Yeah. Now, Unicor also negates the effect of all face at monsters on the field that were special summoned from the extra deck. So, mm, he doesn't know what he's playing against just yet, of course. So, he's, he wouldn't know that he's playing against a Satella Knight. But anything that's going to summon from the extra deck yeah. is going to have a bad time. Now, that's preparation of right. So uh, what it does here is it adds a level 7 or low ritual monster from your deck to your hand, and you can add a ritual spell card from your graveyard to your hand as it's well. It's also so good in the Necros archetype. Yeah. I believe it's actually limited as well. All right, so there you have more searches, just like we said before. You could see that the MST was in the deck still. Is This was one of the big discussions. Uh, how many copies of Mystical Space Typhoon do you run in an Necros deck? And I can tell you it's three. If, if you're going up against any <laughs> other deck. If you, if you, you can always bring it back out, but you want to run three. Right. Um, so now, he went there and got a Gunnir. Gunnir actually stops you from being destroyed by battle or card effects. So he's protecting his Necros of the Decisive Armor there for one turn. Reinforcement of the army has gone out, and I believe that's a Vega or a Deneb that he got to hand. Oh, that's a Deneb. Deneb, yep. Yep. The Stratos of the archetype, really. Yep, allows you to get it from your deck to your hand. So that level 10 monster here with uh, impressive stats, really. The All the Haunted has fetched out Vega, which means that he can then special summon... Yeah, so the, the Satellanite deck, in case you guys are not familiar with it, it just puts together a rank 4 Exceed Monster every turn. In this particular case, with, uh, we got the, the Deneb that surged, and then the Call of the Haunted brings something back. And easy, the, the good thing about the deck is it can turn, do that over and over again because you never really run out of monsters, thanks to Deneb. Also, the fact that uh, all the Stellanite monsters say when this is summoned, so it doesn't matter if it's special summoned or it's mm. normal summoned. And they cannot miss their timing as well. Now, um, you may notice that our app that we've got here is just a little bit behind. Um, that's why the table looks uh, a bit different to what you're seeing on the screen. And yeah, I'll be honest to us, because we're also seeing essentially what you're seeing as well. Yes, those do just look like white blobs to us too. So it's just looking and seeing if we can find out what the... Ah, uh, that's on a... That's Una Kalhai, I believe is how you say it, uh, which it sends one from your deck to your graveyard. Right. Now he's flipped this up. And I believe that's a Triver, which returns that back to the hand, which, to be honest with you, is it's nice because he's going to be able to recycle his Phoenix Chain and his Call of the Haunted. But at the same time, not fantastic for him because he's essentially just given an honest back into hand. <laughs> yeah, but it was one of the few ways to get rid of that big monster. Yeah, now he's going to discard a random card from the hand, and it's going to be that. And that gets rid of the Unicor. Yeah, yeah, that is the Unicor, four stars, with a gigantic lens in his hand. So it seems like the Satellite player, Sebastian Poisel, is holding, standing his ground, really, against the Necros, which yeah. is a 
Definitely I mean, he's hit the card that he wanted to hit because he really didn't want his cards to be negated. Yeah. Now, I believe he's just saying that, oh, you may have already normal summoned this turn. Right. So yeah. he's just reminding his opponent that he's already normal summoned. Yeah, there's another deck that can do that. That would be the, the Yosenius. But uh, they didn't really do that in our round one feature match. No, unfortunately not. They didn't really get the chance to. Oh, no, he did do it once. Uh, he did bring out a Hammer 2 and a... Uh -huh. It looks like our app has just caught up. Yeah, we just have to restart it here, it seems. And now we're finally back I think at least we are and you guys will be soon as well so now reinforcement of the army is coming down so he can get himself a nice level 4 low warrior type monster so they're going to be sure it a unicorn or, or, or Clausellus of course is also a warrior and he's also sure it if you look at the artwork yeah Preparation of rights going down. Yeah, so he can again add something back to his hand and go for the next ritual. The Necros really ritual summoning with ease. Yeah, they, they have a massive potential to just be able to get the cards that they need and put it straight into the hand. Preparation of rights, so they're getting Brionic to the hand. All right, and we got some small technical difficulties, but. Fortunately, you can actually tell those Necros cards apart. Yeah. <laughs> There's the Necros of uh, Brian Egg. Brian's gone to the graveyard, and that's gone to go and get Trishula. Trishula, yeah, the boss monster, so to say. Yeah, it's a 2700 attack, so it's not the biggest attack. But what it does is it banishes from the graveyard, from the field, and from the hand of your opponent. Also doesn't target, meaning that uh, you're not really saving yourself with something like, um, well, the Melodious Lock. Yeah, for the one. But it's luck that we're going to experience later today or in between rounds when you show us the deck. So, plenty of other options in the hand of Martin Sinchak who can continue searching for cards and, and find exactly what he needs. Now it looks like he's going to play there a is kaleidoscope. another kaleidoscope, yeah. And again, we're sure it. Sure it. So, we got decisive armor. So, he's, he's going for the same approach that he went for before. This time, maybe with a little bit more success. And again, Unicor comes to hand. This Ice of Armor is going to try and blow up the Phoenix Chain again, yeah. but it's going to get chained. Yeah. Phoenix Chain does what the name implies. Gets it chained always to chains. the effect <laughs> and uh, stops the big Decisive Armor. And you can say, uh, see Sebastian Poisel already um, getting grabbing his Exceed Monster here because he wants to indicate, yeah, I'm going to use that effect again. But there is Trishula, and now we would need a Phoenix Chain. A Phoenix Chain would actually be more useful here than it would have been a second yeah. ago. But the Phoenix Chain is going to go anyway. So, and there's Call the Haunted. Got to Call of the Haunted, yeah. Um, hmm. He brings back Deneb to go searching again. Oh, no, he uses it. Wait a second. So does he... Right. Ah, okay. He wanted to make sure that his uh, Satellite Knight in the graveyard doesn't get banished. That's why he changed the Call of the Haunted. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. He did have a card in hand still. But um, I'm afraid I, I'm not exactly sure what he was holding on to. Ah, that was the, the other Satellite Knight that he tried to normal summon, but when the judge said, hey, you already had your yeah. one normal summon per turn. Uh, so... Do you think that uh, Sebastian Poisel was uh, somehow thinking he could actually work around the Trishula by s summoning all his cards, all his monsters, and making sure he doesn't mm. have... Yeah, try, trying to not have something in hand was his plan, but unfortunately it just didn't quite work out that way for him. And there's... Here we are. It's all, that. all right, so there is the attack, and now suddenly everything has changed, really, in over the course of just... Like one turn, really. That is essentially what Trishula does. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, you have some sort of advantage over me, and now I'm going to wreck it. Yeah, it's the reason why in Necros Mirror matches you very, very often see players 
consciously avoiding having cards on the field just to deny their opponent the effect of Trishula. All right, and uh, two more ritual monsters in hand for Martin Sinchak, and that is uh, Necros of Gungnir and Necros of Unicor. As you can now again see on the right-hand side, we've sorted out our technical difficulties. Yep, so Altair has come down, which has allowed him to special summon from the grave Vega. Vega allowing him to special summon Tineb. Again. And again, he has the three cards on the field to be able to make another Trevor if needed. Yeah, it's, it's just so impressive how this Satellanite archetype with ease just puts those rank fours together. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a creature of habit. <laughs> There's another Call of the Haunted. Yeah, it's four so level four monsters. Yeah. When, when this card was uh, semi-limited and it, everybody was like, yeah, pff, we don't really play it anymore. Yeah. And suddenly, uh, Satellanites show you, yeah, there's still a lot of use that you can get out of that card. You just need to play the right archetype. All right, so an Altair and a Deneb in hand for Sebastian Poisel. And there's three, which I believe will become a Triver. Yep, there's the Triver. Both of those will go back to hand. There you go. And one of them's going to get discarded. There's four cards in hand. <laughs> Very interesting shuffling here. And he's going to roll the die anyway. So and oh, away goes the Trishula. The Trishula. Ooh, that is a big Ouch. hit. Although it's not uh, bound to stay in the graveyard because the Necros also have ways to return cards from the graveyard to the hand, but still, or well, but even summon it from the graveyard. Yeah, look at Martin's uh, life points there. He is very, very low. Yeah, with uh, three thousand eight hundred, and those can go in, like in no time. And back and down goes two Call of the Haunteds and. And and defend his chain. I gotta say, I really like this way that Sebastian Poisel is playing, and also the build of the deck seems extremely consistent. Now he doesn't actually. There isn't actually much that he can do there. I mean, I believe there's a Necros Mirror now. A Manju is going to come down, which can be Fiendish Chained. Yeah, the Senju of the ten thousand hands, uh, of the uh, thousand uh, hands. Yeah, that's Senju of the th Senju of the thousand hands, and it's it's not being negated. Interestingly enough. So uh, I believe he's looking to possibly just negate whichever, whatever gets summoned by yeah. the ritual spell. But would it have been smarter to deny already the, the search for the Senshu here? Um, well, you could do. It really depends where he thinks it's going to go. Because he, yeah. he actually knows what's in his opponent's hands now. I think he knew two out of the three cards in hand. Not, no, not he, he saw the Gunya be searched for. So he knows that there's a Unicorn that's been searched for. He knows that there's a Gunya and he knows there's a Decisive Armor because Decisive Armor got put back into hand. Now he also knows that the Necros Cyclone's in there. That's one of the downfalls of the Necros deck. You are searching for everything, but then your opponent knows exactly what you've got, which is one of the main reasons why a lot of people are now maining, maining Mind Crush. Yeah. Because as soon as it hits hand, you can just chain and say, yep, you discard it. Discard that card, yeah. Okay. It, it seems to be Mind Crush is a lot more playable than it used to be. It basically, the cross player is with his hand revealed <laughs> for the most part of the turn. Now, that was a uh, Brionic, not a Unicorn hand, I believe. Um, there was just an error on the app. So, Brionic's gone to the graveyard, which has got a shirt to hand, I believe. Yes, according to the app, that is correct. And now, Martin Sinchak checking his graveyard. And don't be fooled, this graveyard is full of more options for the Necros player because you can banish the ritual spell together with a Necros monster to search another ritual spell, for yep. example. So you're not going to run out of steam anytime soon. That's Necros cycle together with Shurit to bring back, well, recycle something from the graveyard. And there's Trishula for the second time. I think that would be the right time for Fiendish Chain. That would be a very good time for Fiendish Chain. And Sebastian Poisel is just waiting for his opponent to announce... Well, I'm not sure exactly. Is it that the effects are going on a chain here? Yeah. He's, he's basically sure it's a result of its effect. Because sure, it, uh, sure it's been put on the chain first. I believe then it'll be Trishula. Now, something that's really interesting, because you can see the players there now, 
um, I always find you get two different types of player. You get one who's very, very interested in what his opponent's doing, <laughs> and you get one that, that we can see right now, which is... The Joshua Schmitz of the game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unique. Oh, your turn is going on for so long. Just do something, <laughs> <laughs> players. All right. So since he's already searching for something, that should be in resolution of the chain, isn't it? And if it's in resolution of the chain, does that mean that he can still chain finish chain, technically speaking? Because I am i don't think so, to be honest. So you activate a ritual spell card, you start a chain, you discard Shurid. Um, those two effects go on a chain. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah, in a, in and a then new, it in a new chain. and then there's a new All chain, right. and then, yeah. Trishula and a new chain. There's the finish chain, so, okay. And there's the call of the haunted to special summon two monsters. Yep. Simply because... Simply because I can? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Martin Sinchak, you can tell by his hands tapping on the top of his cards, he's like, oh, okay, what's next here? Because I'm not in entirely sure, to be honest. He's got the Necros of Gungnir, the Necros of Decisive Armor, and the Necros of Bryanek. So he's got at least another search. And he's not drawn into any of his removal either. So he's looking at those Fiendish Chains and... Uh, oh. And oh, there goes the decisive, decisive armor. armor. Yep. There's okay. another Brionic in hand as well. Yeah, but it is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sebastian Poisel's turn, who has three cards in hand suddenly, and uh, Stellan Alpha, Alpha is the new card he drew into. Now, the question is... Can he wrap things up here? Yeah. And... Um, Th these many looking. yeah looks through the graveyard is always like how many Valkyrs are already in the graveyard? Can you prevent me doing any more damage? Things like that that play a very big role in this game. So his field again, as you can see those many, many Telenites and in the back row. Oh, I can see he's looking at a one oh one there. And uh, that would actually finish the game, would it not? That should be Enough, yes. He's got assembled a big field. His finish chain is no longer active, but we've seen him recycle. He's got 2,100 attack there, another 2,100 attack, and then if you could just uh, have a look at what's there. Another 1 7. So that could technically. So 1 7 and 2 1 is already 3 8, and he's got another big attacker. Yeah. So, so that seems like game if we don't see a Valkyrus now. And, uh, well, we know, because we got perfect information, that Martin Sinchak is not holding on to it. Interestingly enough, why does he still hold on to the Bryonic? Why didn't he go searching for Volkurus? It's an interesting question. And I believe what you were saying earlier is completely correct. If you don't make the right search at the right time, then you've lost the game. Yeah, I mean, me not being an expert... And thinking about it, he used Call of the Haunted. I believe he actually did that in his opponent's end phase as well. Yeah. Uh, meaning that he still has summons this turn. So he can now actually make another Xyz monster. Wow, so Sebastian Poisel really is going big here. There we see the Sentinel at Unukal High that allows him to special something, something from, oh no, it sends to the graveyard, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's Foolish Burial in a monster. Yeah, and there are the attacks. And he is just, yeah. And that's also interesting. I mean, Martin Sinchak revealing his hand is also one of the moves that you never see from a veteran player. He never shows his opponent what he is holding on to. Just to deny that piece of information that could make all the difference in a second game and a possible third game. That's actually, it's actually quite amazing to see Necros fall so much. Yeah, um, I'm still not sure. Like, I think the Necros of Volkuros would have been a, a possible search target. It does end the battle phase, of course. And of course, he's running two copies. I mean, you don't play without that card. But, but technically, he's running five copies because he's running three Bionic. Yes. And uh, some would say he's running even more copies than that because you can also search and return Bionic. Well, let's have a look at the side decks. So Martin Sinchak has uh, two copies of Max C that are gold against the Satellanites, I would yeah. say. Uh, Denko Seka which is also quite good. We've seen a lot of back row cards being flipped in this game. Yeah, Call of the Haunted and Fiendish Chain, if you can't flip it face up, you're not going to have a good time. He also, Sebastian does actually main three Mind Crush as well, 
No, he didn't. We didn't see one. We these. didn't see one at all. But he, he does main three there. So again, a Denko Seca would be fantastic at stopping that. Uh, now we've got Twister as well. A bit more removal. And What's the volcanic queen in the side deck of Martin Sinchak doing? That's a very good question. I mean, you, you I can tribute. Oh God, I can't. Oh, you can summon it by uh, tributing your opponent's monsters. I remember that much. Uh, I think you only need to attribute one, ra unlike uh, for Lava Golem, where you have to attribute two. It's a six-star monster, and yeah, you have to attribute one of your opponent's monsters, which is good if you want to get rid of a monster that you can otherwise not get rid of, really. Uh, well, it doesn't target either. Yeah. So it's literally get rid of that. It would be one of the ways to get out of that lock of... Yeah. Uh, Monarch Storm Fourth is one of the cards that gets rid of locks like them. Right. Like the Melodious deck as well. But again, there isn't any sort of non-targeting... Well, to be fair, the only thing that there really is that's going to stop targeting in this deck, I believe, is Trishula. Right. Uh, you, you just saw in our other camera perspective that Sebastian Poisel is already done side decking and he was so relaxed, I would say. He's feeling confident. Yeah. His uh, side deck. He's uh, got an Imperial Lion wall there. Yeah. Which he he's probably putting in. This might be something. Other than that, he's got a very interesting side deck, in my opinion. Two copies of Flying C, not Max C, little, little brother. And he's got Effect Veilers, two copies there, Book of Moon, two Twisters, Bottomless Trap Hole. And uh, what about the Shadow Imprisoning Mirror? It no, it doesn't really do anything. It, the only thing it's going to stop is the Jin release of Rituals. Yeah. But even then... Yeah, I, I'm not even sure if that's It's a not an activated trick. effect. Yeah, exactly. So it's not and all the Necros monsters are water monsters, of course. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't do much. But it appears his main deck is more than prepared to take on the gigantic task of defeating Necros. And interestingly, Martin isn't actually playing the Jin release of Rituals. Although it is a fantastic card. It's literally Vanity's Emptiness. makes one of your monsters Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I've heard um, the argument goes both ways in a way. Uh, some players have said they don't want to re rely too much on the chin releaser. While other players have said that there are only so many answers you have, especially in the mirror match. You, you got those two copies of Book of Eclipse and that's pretty much it. Now my favorite... Um, oh, we, it looks like we've just gone into yeah. there. And that looks like a Deneb. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, he's oh, no. Oh, no. He's yeah. sent to the graveyard, yeah, of course. Uh, so, setting up something here. Interestingly enough, Sebastian Poisley did have a Deneb in hand, so he did have the option to go for it. He got two copies of Call of the Haunted. And uh, with that start, he's very vulnerable to a, to a Trishula. He will be, yes. Uh, the question is, does... Uh, oh, actually, no, he won't, because he has a Call of the Haunted and would take the only monster, the only card that's in his graveyard out of the graveyard. Ah, so maybe he's baiting, uh, goating Martin Sinchuk into the something here. Yeah. Here's the Necros Kaleidoscope, and there immediately follows the uh, Call of the Haunted. But yeah. and there goes MST the MST in the in chain and yeah. the second Call of the Haunted. <sighs> wow, that hurts for Martin Sinchak. Yes, because I believe he just declared that he is going to bring out the Trishula as well. Yeah. So the Kaleidoscope. Now, sure, it's going to the graveyard. It's going gonna, it's gonna to net him another warrior-type monster. Yeah. And there is a Necros Mirror straight in hand. And now, uh, but, but the thing is, there's a Call of the Haunted in the graveyard now. Uh, not as part of that chain, I believe. Yeah, but, but just like we said before, uh, Trishula he hits play at the resolution of the ritual spell. You're correct, actually, yeah. but it, it really depends on um, whether the judge catches anything like that or if the player understands that that would be the case. Uh, see. It, it, so oh, it is a you can effect, so if he's missed it, he's missed it, basically. Well, I I think he's just indicating now that he's using Trishula. I'm not... Yeah, yeah, yeah there he, we go. he understands it. He's not missing it. Because why would you? And interestingly enough, he picks the Call of the Haunted rather than the monster. Oh, no. No, he's fine with that. Yeah. Okay, so he does get his Trishula effect. It seemed like for a second that uh, Sebastian Poisel just goaded his opponent. Had, had kind of defeated yeah. what he was trying to do, but didn't really. But he got the effect off. Was it in fact which... Uh, did you see which satellite it was that he brought out with that? Oh, um, I would... I guess it was a no. It wasn't a Deneb because it didn't go searching, did it? 
No, I don't think he went searching. Maybe so he, yeah. he holds on to Vega and Altair at the moment. He did have an, a Deneb in hand, but that is now gone, thanks to Trishula. And uh, that means his whole engine has been put to a sudden halt. Oh. Yep, and the search has gone for a Brionic. Brionic has gone and got Unicor. Yeah, there's the Unicor. And uh, Martin Sinchak's hand here. Again, Necros Mirror with another short, so Unicor can hit the field. There is a mystical space typhoon in his graveyard as well. Sorry, I thought that was his hand for a second. I was wondering why suddenly everything had changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the judge uh, checking over the card text and uh, making sure that everything is going according to, well, being played by the rules. And uh, this is a very good position for Martin Sinchak. Yeah, definitely. Now, something that... Um, there's a combo that Necros can pull off that I really enjoy, uh, but some people don't. And it's the fact that if you use, I believe it's Kaleidoscope, which allows you to take from your Synchro, yeah. a synchro Monster, or a card from your Extra Deck. Extra Deck, yes. Yeah, you, just, you send Shooting Quasar Dragon to your graveyard. Mm -hmm. And then you Xyz Summon Insect to Exa Beetle. And then you equip that card with the Shooting Quasar Dragon, you have 4,000 attack Exabeetle. If they then destroy the Exabeetle, Shooting Quasar Dragon's effect happens, and it allows you to get the Shooting Star Dragon out. I haven't seen that in action yet. It's very good, because <laughs> it's either you've got 4,000 attack monster, when you get rid of that, you've got to deal with the 3,300 attack monster. Wow. It's huge. But, but yeah, so many good combos in the Necrostate It's, it's really. massive. But and as you can see right now, he's just essentially completely shut down <laughs> Yeah, Sebastian, there is and nothing... Th there's there. the Destiny draw for Sebastian Poisel with Vega and Altair in hand. He desperately needs something. He drew into an upstart goblin. Oh, so here we see. He's going to draw another card at least, but again, he needs something and fast. So there we go. And those are what the may very well be the last card. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be a monster. I just saw it briefly at the top of the screen. Yeah, it is a monster. Oh, it's Effect Veiler, which is actually quite good for him. <laughs> he can Effect Veiler, the Unicorn, Triver, and then attack. All right, so there we go again with the... Interestingly enough, with all of those Settler Knights, they have been standing with their backs against the wall, but they, they're still in for the fight. They yeah, definitely. Not going to give up yet. And uh, so he's got the effect veil in hand. He just went searching. Now he would have to, I believe, play the effect veil in now, or he won't get any effects. Right. So he's running through his extra deck. Although it's in your opponent, it's your yeah. opponent's and main phase, isn't it? So. That's uh, that's where the confusion came from. Yeah, so he, the Effect Veiler at the moment, not, not much really use. Much, but I believe he's looking for something that he can probably activate in his opponent's turn, which is going to help him. And has he found it? And that is, I believe... The, was it Delta Ross, Delta I think? Ross, yep. yep. He's changing his mind, though. So is there something better than Delta Ross? He just went for a Triver. I believe that Triver just has a slightly larger defense. <laughs> yeah. Hanging in the ropes here. So Delta Ross... Uh, so Delta Ross is also one of those gigantic beat six, 2,100 attack. Um, a 2,100 death. Interestingly enough, so and, and Trevor with the 2 5 death, so that's well more, but still, is it enough? I don't think so. Sure, it's going to bring out Brionic, allowing a search. Well, Brionic is um, returns up to two monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck back to the hand, uh, back yep. to no, the it is, extra just deck. and that means that he gets rid of the big stone that Sebastian Poisel threw in his way. And yep, he has two basically two two options, he needs to get rid of one of them and he only has well he needs to get rid of both of them to be able to actually do anything because as soon as Brionic hits the field he needs to be able to negate the Unicor to be able to negate the Brionic <laughs> yeah sounds like a, a big task really 
So that is the equalizer for Martin Sinchuk, who comes back after a defeat in the first game. And um, now we're going to go into a deciding duel number three yeah. for the first time today. It doesn't look like either of them are looking to side deck. They must have made their choices in sticking with it. Yeah, and uh, the mood of Martin Sinchak has changed a lot. After the first game, he felt a little beaten up. Uh, and I've seen that before when players have won one game in the feature match. They're like, okay, I lit at least I didn't go down without putting up a fight. No, it was great. Like, he, the, the first game was immense. The second game, he still actually made a good, a good go of it. But in the end, Unicorn just completely and totally stops him. Right. So there we see the shuffling, and like you said, none of these guys have uh, exchanged any more cards from their main and side decks, which is interesting. But the side decks didn't really play a big role in the second game. Uh, well, actually, I believe the effect veilers are actually sided in. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically all we've seen from it so far. But they were a little bit too little too late. Basically, yeah. And now we're about to start the third and deciding duel between those two guys. Now you can see our volunteers that are standing behind those players and putting in the cards. Uh, Ryan on the right-hand side and Michael on the left-hand side. And Ryan has been doing this a couple of times before. That is... It's, well, actually, that's not a bad hand for Sebastian there. He's got Call the Haunted, Reinforcement of the Army, Soul Charge. I believe that's a... Vega? Oh, it could be a Deneb. Whereas we see two chain. twisters in uh, Martin's hand, together with three Necros monsters, two, two times and, Locturus a and a Trishula. That's actually not a good hand, because he cannot go searching. He can't, but he's going to get rid of the back row there. That actually, actually, that's a, a quite a bad hand for, for Necros. Yeah, but he's going to draw another card. Well, Kicking things off in the last game is uh, Sebastian Poisel, who does have a reinforcement of the army to search for the all-important Deneb. And, uh, well, assembling his combos, really, with his hand here, the Call of the Haunted, Finished Chain, Soul Charge, and an Altair. Now, that was a normal... That uh, was that it Ulukal Hai again. Yeah, he again sent to the graveyard. Yeah, oh, there's a non-ritual card. Oh, it's a... Oh, <laughs> there oh. we go. There's his search for his... Yeah, uh, that's the door opener, really, that uh, allows him to search for whatever he needs, really, with the Senchu. And, I mean, if Sebastian Poisel would be aware of the hand of his opponent, he might consider activating a finish chain here. He's not going to do that now. And even if he were, there's the Twister to get rid of it. Not just one, but two. Yeah, two twisters, really. So it's very interesting because normally I always see the... Because I'm so used to this chain for the Satellite Knights that always go for Deneb first, search Altair, then next turn bring back Deneb with Altair and so on. It seems like Sebastian Poisel is very... He prefers to go with the graveyard because he makes so much use of Call of the Haunted. Yes. It's an easy way to summon monsters. Okay, uh, that got Claw Solus. Claw Solus was discarded to get Necro's Mirror. Right. Necro's Mirror is being activated. And no response from Sebastian Poisel, whose back row doesn't really allow him to respond, really. Well, he could activate a Call of the Haunted, but he cannot stop the summon, the incoming summon, from resolving. He's really just kind of checking and saying, is there something I can do with that? And the, the answer is no, because unfortunately, Trishula is a thing. Yeah. Phoenix Chain, Twister. Twister. Ooh, that really hurts. Called Haunted, Twister. <laughs> Which means that he's getting rid of now the only card on his field. Yeah, and suddenly this bad hand that Martin Sinchak had turned into an amazing, amazing hand. hand. Just with one card. Yeah, with, with all the answers to uh, Sebastian Poisel's options. And he did have a number of options here. And all of them oh. gun. And there's the soul charge, and so much for the comeback, really. He only has a left and nothing in the graveyard to bring back. This could 
just be the end for Sebastian. And here's wow. why we see why Necros is so, so good. Yeah. It really can do it all. It can explode like crazy. There are two Necros of Volcuros that are not much use, really, for Martin. But there is the Altair, and he attacks over the Senshu, but he doesn't get the effect, really. And, and that was a telling over Alpha. Ah, okay, so he's hoping for his opponent Martin to atta to activate something, but he's not gonna. Not well, gonna do that. Give he him any no favors, really. Yeah, he can just attack. So now, Sebastian Poisel left without a field, really, and he finds a second back row card. Attacks again. Finish chain. Finish. Okay, so he bought himself some time. Uh, whereas Martin Sinchak, he has a maxi and he drew into a uh, Necros of. I'm not oh, it was a gun, yeah. Ah, okay. And then. Not quite sure what was set there. He, yeah, he found an MST to, s to destroy the Phoenix chain, and uh, our app is just a little behind. Oh, yeah, there you it's go. A mind crush. It's a mind crush. Minecraft is also not a good card when you're playing. Mirror Force. Gunnier. Gunnier stops it from being destroyed. And yeah, and that there's, is. There's game. nothing he can wow. do about it. What a game, honestly. Like the first five cards in Martin Sinchak's hand, we were like, yeah. He's yeah, it's not great. I mean, he needs something else to be able to make it work. And then he drew what he needed to make it work. Yeah. But to be honest with you, if you think about how many cards he had that would make that work. That is true, yeah. There he were a number of options for him. And, and now his mood has all changed. He gets up and smiling picking up his card and uh, well good finish for the Definitely. Slovakian player so congratulations to him and it's it's I think it's the first time in fact we've had a Slovakian player in our feature match so I have just checked his deck there is 23 cards in his deck which would have got him the card that he would need <laughs> to be able okay. to play that through so, so over half of his deck right. actually makes the other half of his the, deck work. the odds were in his he, favor he definitely he, he was going to draw something that he needed yeah. there but that's definitely something we can ask him like after that match uh, how, did you expect to turn this game around with two copies of nectars of Lucurus, which he didn't need until the very end yeah but he his deck always provided him with what he needed an mst to destroy the phoenix chain and then the Gungnir to make sure that his Trishla would be able to attack for game. I mean, it fell down in game one, but it seemed... And he didn't really have to side deck. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm I don't know whether... Sure if he if he side decked at he, all. He uh, bought in a max C, which, okay. which, which you said would be fantastic against any sort of teller. Now, what I've noticed then is it's possible that Sebastian had a really good matchup against this mm. in the first game. Yeah. But then changed his deck to combat this, and in so actually made it less consistent. It seems to, so, yeah. yeah at, le at least it's a, that's a definitely a, a viable option, what happened here. Uh, well, bad luck for Sebastian, who yeah, really definitely. had all the control in the first game and, and showed us that the Satellite is still a thing. With, uh, Satellite still is a thing. Yeah, recycling all those Call of the Haunteds, those Fiendish Chains. Some interesting card choices, I guess, but uh, it all makes sense when you look at the... Uh, strategy that he was going for. Well, Trevor is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, like, it, it literally just resets the field, and then you're like, well, now I've got all of my trap cards back, I'll just put them all back down and yeah. attack you. And then, it, oh no, you got rid of my Trevor, I'll just call the Haunted Fiendish Chain, bring back out Trevor. Yeah. Return them all to my hand, put them back down, attack you. <laughs> and that's exactly what Sadalanite has turned into. It's yeah, literally it's just bring out Trevor, win the game. Yeah, reset the game, and then eventually win it. Yeah. It's like one step back, two steps forward. Well, as we saw, he when he played the Call of the Haunted, bought out three monsters in his opponent's end phase, then made a Trevor, boy it all back, and then could still normal yeah. summon. It's ridiculous. But also, in the second game, if you remember, if that mystical space typhoon wouldn't have destroyed that Call of the Haunted, and he wouldn't have had anything in the graveyard, that Trishula would have yep. fizzled, not really doing anything. But that comes back to what we said right at the start of the round is there's a lot of debate over how many Mystical Space Staff yes. to run. You run three. <laughs> you, you need to run three. You run three and then you run even more removal inside there. That, uh, that uh, game the right there was a strong case for running more than one copy, yeah. two copies. Even. Definitely. I mean, there's something that's interesting is a lot of other decks stop running Mystical Space yes. Typhoon in the main deck because Necros doesn't run trap cards. Mm. So the only one, the only place that's actually seeing play of Mystical Space Typhoon these days is Necros because everybody else is running all of the back row to try and stop Necros. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting how everybody's deck has suddenly changed from there's a widespread meta to, oh, Necros is a thing now, I need to beat that. What do you think about the absence of Chin Releaser of Rituals? It's, in, it's an interesting one. I, enj I, I enjoy the card because you are just making a, a walking, talking vanity's emptiness. And it doesn't stop you either, I believe. It's just your opponent. Yeah, yeah. Your, your opponent cannot your special opponent. summon. So it's a vanity emptiness that's better. And if you stick it on any of your cards, you have so many cards to protect yeah. all of yours. Necros of the Decisive Armor giving it plus allows attack. Necros of Gunya stopping it being destroyed. Um, Union Call is, sorry, Trishley stopping it being targeted. So, yeah. It, it's huge. <laughs> You can really, you can really, really kind of just make one invincible monster, just like Bujin used to, but even bigger, and then stop your opponent from doing anything. Right. Well, interesting, interesting round two feature match. Took a lot longer than our first round, which was over in, in a it hurry. Was very, very quickly. Yeah. yeah. We have uh, Kevin Langenberg from the Netherlands, the reigning Dutch champion, uh, losing his uh, match with uh, your senior deck, and it didn't really feel like a typical your typical you send you deck. It, it, it didn't feel like your send you whatsoever yeah. he, he was he, he was playing anti meta he was playing uh, i would rather say he's playing anti meta than your send yeah. you no maybe even anti necros yeah specifically anti necros although it, it breaks clear as well because something that uh, we we kind of missed on before because we weren't too sure is the mm. fact that anti spell fragrance actually stops yes. play cards you can't set pendulum monsters yeah and that that was a big deal in that match actually all right so, um, what, what do you expect Necros to be, uh, like 20% of the field, 30% of the field? When I was actually looking myself, um, most of the decks that I saw were Necros. The rest of them looked to be either Clear or Burning Abyss. Mm -hmm. And then you got the odd Volcanic, the odd Elemental Hero. I mean, there's a few people that spiritual are Spiritual Beasts. Yeah, Spiritual Beasts. I think I actually only saw two of those when I was... This was just when I was pulling through, of course. Yeah, but, but how is that... Um, wh what is your reasoning for that? Is it that players don't know how to play the deck yet? Or do they not it's get their hands on the cards? It's incredibly complicated. Okay. You can get a hold of all the Spirit Beast monsters much, much easier than you can the Necros cards. Okay. Uh, in fact, I believe that you pull more Ritual Beasts than you do some Necros cards. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, you it's easy to get the deck together, but there's also some older cards which you need to get a hold of, which mm. people are, are holding on to now, and it's hard to get a hold of them. It's the emergency teleport because right. they're all psychic monsters and they're all under level three. Yeah. So you can just special summon them, although they can only be special summoned once per turn, and that's how all of the combos work. You have okay. to keep, that's one of the things you have to keep track of, which is why you start to have a headache <laughs> just playing the game and thinking, right, so now I can activate my fusion monster's effect and then chain its other effect send two of one of my monsters to the graveyard because it doesn't need both to go to the graveyard, then bring two monsters out to the field. I still get my search because one's gone. But then I need to think about which monster I'm going to bring and which one I it's, banish. It's, it's, let's it's just say ridiculous. it's not the perfect choice for seven rounds of Swiss no. and some of the best players in the world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a ridiculous deck. It can bring out some huge plays and huge monsters just that attack and you just win. It, the field it can build is fantastic and it can search his deck just as consistently as Necros can. Right. It's just complicated. Well, you're going to hear from the pros a little bit later today when we're going to have a couple of interviews where they will also say what's a good choice for seven rounds of Swiss. So uh, let's take a quick break uh, from YCS Prague, but we'll be back in just a second, so stay with us for more coverage.